Greetings and welcome, everyone. I am Dr. Wolf, and today I'd like to address a topic which has been coming back into my thoughts for many months now. Love language. Or more specifically, how to understand your significant other's love language. At this point, many of you may think that I'm referring to physical affection or perhaps romantic conversation. And while, yes, those are important elements, love language can refer to all kinds of passionate gestures. And what I'd like to focus on today is how you express love may not be how your significant other wants to be loved. Let me give you an example. I've been married for several years now, but way back when my lady and I were first dating, there was quite a bit we needed to learn about each other to help our relationship grow. A few weeks before Valentine's that year, I decided I was going to do something really special for my lady. I discovered that she enjoyed the music from Phantom of the Opera, so I took it upon myself to get my singing chops back into top shape. I set aside time every night to practice one particular song for weeks, and I was rather pleased with how the end result sounded. I was going to serenade my lady while we enjoyed a weekend touring Salt Lake City. I was so sure that she was going to be overjoyed to hear how much effort I had put into this romantic gesture. But it turned out she really wasn't interested in any kind of serenading. She had her own ideas on what constituted a wonderful Valentine's weekend. And while I made every effort to meet those expectations, my weeks of preparing my singing voice really didn't yield any positive results. I was confused and even a little hurt when I discovered that all the hard work had amounted to pretty much nothing. But... I had learned a very valuable lesson about love language. As much as we may practice the mindset of it's the thought that counts when it comes to family gatherings, birthday presents, and even holiday traditions, when it comes to a long-term relationship, emphasizing it's the thought that counts really only goes so far. You need to express affection in a way that your significant other understands and appreciates. By that same token, you too may better understand why your significant other prefers to express their affections in ways that don't really appeal as much to you as they think it should. Oftentimes, the two of you may not be speaking the same love language. Even after several years of marriage, I'm still learning how to speak my lady's love language. She shows greater appreciation when I'm cleaning our home compared to bringing her a present. She'd rather enjoy a quiet game of cards with friends and family compared to an expensive dinner out. Oftentimes, you may find that the small and simple measures on a consistent basis will yield far greater results than any single grand show of affection, regardless of how much preparation or effort you put into it. And in the end, it is vitally important to remember that both parties must feel as though they are getting more out of a relationship than what they're putting into it. Which basically means you'll need to invest far more than you ever thought you'd be able to give in order to make a lasting relationship work. And if any of that sounds confusing, well, that's because it is. That's life. What do you think, though? What sort of lessons have you learned from your own relationships regarding love language? What kind of further questions does this discussion raise? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you.